Hello and welcome to the Car Kerna channel and welcome to a video that I have been waiting so long to do. We're finally here. Today we're going to take a look at the coolest Toyota, in my opinion, ever made and that you cannot get in the US. That's just how it is. This Toyota is possibly one of the most luxurious and the top of the line luxury car that ever comes out of Toyota land. And no, it is not the Lexus LS. It is the V12 Toyota Century. Let's check it out. So the Toyota Century, the flagship of all flagships when it comes to Toyota. Folks, this is a car so nice that the Emperor of Japan actually drives one. And here we are in good old USA with the 1997 Toyota Century. Right hand drive, imported, and I am so happy to share this one with you because I, every time we cut this video, I have to pester the owner. So how much do you want for it? Because I would love to own one and I will own one one day, uh, Mrs. Car Kiranat, objecting or not. Let's take an exterior tour of the Toyota Century so you can see where the Japanese were thinking when they're making not their LS or all that, when they're making car at the level of a Rolls Royce, Bentley. And I know you're gonna laugh when you look at this, but this is the Japanese way. They're not showy, they're not just in your face. They're actually subtle and humble. That's how they do things. Let's start with the front. And when you look at this front end, initially, when you look at it in a picture, it just looks like, okay, well, it's a Toyota. It looks like a typical Japanese car. But actually, it has like a mobster look to it. I, I feel like this is more Yakuza car than uh, Emperor of Japan car because it just has a, like a mean look to it. It's a very subtle design. There's really not much going on here, but it's just, just classic, classy is the word here. Then we roll over to the biggest thing for us in the US and probably everywhere around the world are the fender mounted mirrors. And the owner of this car, he specifically wanted one with these because, I mean, come on, why not? If you're gonna buy a car like this, let's make it be the most extreme and the most different than anything else in the roads in the US. So. We're gonna take this thing for a drive later, but I'll say one thing about these mirrors. They're cool because they're always in your side, but uh, if you're a little older and your eyesight is not perfect, they're a little too far, at least for me. But a Japanese thought this was a great idea. And another great idea that Japanese love to do and some others are, is this pole. This is a pretty long car. Japanese are usually shorter, I'm shorter. So I really appreciated this pole that you can actually see the edge of the car which is pretty cool. Something else that is interesting is the uh, little reflector here. I believe this might be the turn signal and maybe we'll check it out. Let's see if that is the turn signal and I'm already, I've done this six times already. Let's go to the other side and see if that is actually the turn signal. Once I figure out where the, oh, here we are. That is the turn signal. And it is pretty interesting. So they have a turn signal there, turn signal here, and then turn signal here. Because you drive a century, you don't get one turn signal, you get three turn signals. Because again, why not? Wrong button again. It's very unfamiliar with this car, by the way. Anyhow, something about Japanese Toyotas. They actually don't like to call their cars Toyota. There's actually nowhere on this car that it says Toyota because they actually like to give their cars a symbol. This might be a little bit on the old school side, but if you look at the symbol of the Toyota Century, and every model will have its own symbol. I remember that from the old days back home. Every model will have its own symbol, so that is the symbol for the Toyota Century. And another slightly different symbol on the hood. It doesn't say Toyota, you don't see a Toyota logo. That is just uh, 
for us across the uh, pond there. Japanese don't believe in logos. But going to the side, it almost looks like it's missing something. Something is like broken, but there's no mirror on the side, which gives it kind of a different look. It's a pretty interesting look. There is really no features at all. There's absolutely nothing. It's just flat. And that's the whole point. People used to love the Land Cruiser because it is a very nice car, but it's not in your face. It's subtle. It is understated. Casing point. This is a flagship of all flagships, and it's very understated, and that is purposefully. Because the Japanese, they don't believe in show-off. To them, luxury is kind of class and respect and humbleness, and this is it. But it is anything but humble because there is so much chrome here, it's all over the place. The bottom is all chrome. The door handles are chrome. Folks, these are not plastic door handles from your 1999 Camry. These are actually chrome handles. It's pretty interesting. And then you got this, it, to me it looks like brushed aluminum. Very, very cool. I mean, when you start looking at the details and the craftsmanship here, it is mind-blowing. And we haven't even gotten to the interior, which things go to the next level. But then again, we have a very humble, small badge, which distinctly says V12. Because yes, folks, this has Toyota's only V12. Not a fire-breathing V12, but it is nonetheless a V12 and a beautiful one. We'll take a look at that in a bit. But then you look at the wheel. It's just, again, this mobster look to me. And it has that big century emblem in the middle of it. Such a classy looking wheel. It actually matches the character of the car perfectly. But then we look at the back. And to me, I, I really like the back of this thing. It's kind of like a, you can tell this is a Toyota, but at the same time, you can't because we have a giant chrome bumper, which is pretty actually, pretty, for a car this old, it's pretty holding up pretty well. Toyota for you there. Then it just says, Century. Because we don't need to tell you this is a Toyota or anything, we just need to say, Century. Because I don't think there's any, any Japanese in the world that doesn't know what a Century is and who drives it. And then again, we have that little uh, logo again, just a very classy, again, if you look at it from, from the middle, this angle, it's just a very mobster looking car. I mean, it looks epic. Folks, the video doesn't do it justice. It just looks epic in person. It just has a, a character to it. I love the way this thing looks. It is epic. Having said that, let's go take a look under the hood because one of the distinguishing features of this generation of Sentry is the V12, which is in the latest generation, is actually long gone. Would you look at that? Now, this thing is missing an engine cover, which does say V12 on it and all these goodies. And we did remove one more cover here, just so you can see. Let's take a look at this engine. And the designation for this engine is 1GZFE. This is one and only, and it didn't come in any other car but this one. There are a lot of quirks about this engine, and this is your typical Toyota madness, because they really went mad with this. I mean, the level of details and sophistication in this engine are LFA level. So the first thing is, this is basically two inline sixes, literally two inline sixes sharing the same crank because the engine is split in the, in the middle and you have left bank, right bank, and everything is split as well down to the engine computer. You have two throttle bodies, you have two air filters, you have two mass airflows. Everything is split right in the middle. And this is such a cool design for this. And folks, information on this engine is so scarce 
Nobody talks about it. Nobody really knows a lot about it. And I'm not gonna proclaim to be an expert. I've never worked on one of these, but I did extensive research on this engine to share with you some technical aspects of this engine because it is just a work of art. The first thing is other than the split, which everybody talks about, this is actually not a timing belt engine. Most people assume it is, it is not. It has three timing chains. It has VBTI, which is pretty sophisticated for the time. Three chains in, in this exact orientation, and then the third one goes to the bottom. You have dual overhead cam, but the cams are connected to each other, and then there's only one sprocket, similar to the UZ series engine, like in the LS, like the MZ series engine, in many cars, so in a Lexus. But then that connects to a timing chain, which is pretty interesting. So there's two chains going from each cam on each side to the crank, and then there's a third chain that goes all the way to the bottom to the oil pump, which is pretty interesting setup. They've used that setup here and there, but it, this has a, a proper oil pump chain. Actually, it's a pretty big chain from looking at the diagrams and everything. But then we move to the quarks, if you would, of the technical stuff. First thing is, we have a massive radiator right here. This is actually an original one in this car. Of course, after all, we're looking at a Toyota here. Everything's gonna last forever. But then this giant radiator doesn't have a cap. The cap is actually right here in this uh, little bottle. That's where the cap is, and your recovery bottle is right here, and it does have a little sensor for the level. That is nothing exciting, exhilarating, but this is where things kind of go an interesting route, because when you look down here, there is a lot going on here, and you see lines going to the fan and all this stuff. And then, very curiously, you see this says, engine fan fluids and this is where the germans heartbeat just skipped a beat because what that is is 1993 camry had something similar not exactly the same this takes it to the next level so this has not a mechanical fan not a electric cooling fan for the radiator this has a hydraulic cooling fan not a great idea because uh, you're adding one more entire system of hydraulics that is unnecessary. In the older Toyotas that made it to the US, that was actually shared with the power steering pump. You just the power steering pump, did the power steering pump and powered the fan as well. And Tori used to leak. Most people just delete them because they're a pain. But in this, things are to the century level. This has a power steering pump, which is on this side. You got a reservoir right here. Nothing really different about it. Got the reservoir right, right down here. And then, if, if you look here, there is one other reservoir, which is, uh, huh, interesting. Because this actually has two pumps. One for the power steering, which resides, you can kind of see it from the edge right here resides right there. There's that power steering pump. And then if you look on the other side, like right, right here, we got another entire other pump. Really hard to see. There's a complete separate pump for the fan. Super over-engineered and unnecessary, but that's what they went with. And there is actually a reason for it. If you put a mechanical fan, it makes too much noise. If you put an electric fan, it's also going to make too much noise and it's going to be intermittent noise, not all the time like a mechanical fan. With a hydraulic fan, they're so quiet you can barely hear them and they can run them at such low RPM that you can continuously have the cooling effect without having a giant fan blaring and blowing all the dust and all the craziness. That's why they did it and it is it makes absolutely no sense in the 93 Camry, but in this makes absolute sense because this is the car that needs to be quiet. But then more normal stuff. The washer fluid is right here. Normal vacuum operated booster for the brakes. 
it's of course on the wrong side for us in the US, but this is right hand drive. And then something interesting. You have a, a heater shut off valve because you want optimum cooling when you're not using the heater. So this shuts off the circuit. This is nothing exclusive to this. We've seen it in other models, but of course this one is going to have it. Something else on the other side is you has a fuel, fuse block right here. And the best part is this is my favorite part. This is the most Japanese part of this car. The entire interior, majority of the buttons are in Japanese, but you come here under the hood. The button to open the fuse block says push in English. Because in the Japanese mind, every single Japanese person knows how, what push means. So let's go with that. Right next to that, we have engine oil and transmission fluid dipstick, something that is disappearing in cars in this times, but the century, of course, being older and uh, more proper, has a proper transmission fluid dipstick. Over here is where the battery lives. It's just a giant behemoth battery. Lives right here underneath covers. I wish that we had the whole cover so you could see the whole picture, but I'll leave you a picture of this so you know how this looks like with all the covers installed. What a beautiful engine, folks. If you have a chance to drive one of these, they are sublime is the word. Let's put a clip of how this engine sounds and noting the sound of the starter. check out the interior of the Century and the first thing you notice just the way this handle sounds is unbelievable let's check out the interior here and let's start with the most important thing most people see this on video on uh, pictures and they're like what is so special about this it just looks like cloth seats folks that is not the case it does not do justice to look at this in video or cameras, this material. You have to see it and feel it because this is wool. This is not your cloth seat from a 99 Camry. It is incredible how it feels. I'd rather have this over leather any day because it is just a beautiful and the craftsmanship here is unbelievable. You have aluminum right here. Of course, this is a car from the 90s. There's an ashtray with a cigarette lighter in every single door. And then the door handle is right here. And then you got your seat adjustment, your window, your locks, and your, of course, seat heater and a little speaker. And the coolest thing is there's Japanese writing all over the place. I just wish we knew what it said. And then there's this big handle and another handle. Just you know, you have choices in this century. And the most important thing about the door panel is the lock. I mean, would you look at this beauty? It's all chrome. It looks just, this is the stuff nobody would have cared if it was plastic, but it's not. It's chrome. It's beautiful. Let's check out the inside. This is where it's at. Not really in the front seat. We'll look at the rear seat in a bit. But if you look at the dash, it has this just a flat top Super nice materials here, folks. I mean, everything here screams quality. You don't have cheap old plastic. You actually have aluminum trim here. It's pretty, pretty insane to see this level of details. And then, of course, all the buttons are in Japanese because, but the button under the hood says push. But there's a tiny little screen, which when you turn it on once more, it says, Century GPS voice navigation, because why wouldn't it say that? Now, of course, this map is completely irrelevant because I don't even, it just doesn't even show anything where we're at, it just shows us in the middle of nowhere, which uh, we are, of course, in the middle of nowhere, considering this is a Japanese car. And then we look at the center. All the controls are in Japanese for the HVAC. We have discovered that if you press this, you have cold air. And if you change the temperature, it is in centigrade, which is not a big deal. And then you press it again and it all goes away. 
that's as far as we have figured out at this point because I don't even know what this does. What is this? No clue. If you're Japanese and you can read that, do let us know, please. And then the radio is right here, completely useless because we're in the wrong zone for it. You do have a CD player, which is actually a CD changer in the glove box. And then uh, we move to the steering wheel, which to me looks like a kind of an old LS 400 steering wheel almost with no no controls at all and you have that big insignia in the middle then the gauges I mean you basically have the speed in the middle you this little screen which now says some Japanese stuff is actually the tachometer when you're driving your odometer is right here temperature fuel clock and something else in Japanese probably saying outside temperature 25 centigrade looks about right and then on the left you have your uh, gear selector and that's about it very simplistic you come to this side this looks like typical toyota stuff your mirrors your dome you have a little storage compartment right here which is very nicely lined here and then you can lock the trunk release over here your trunk opener your fuel door and that's about it and then there's something else that is pretty cool and interesting of course this is a century and it has a power operated steering column now there are some buttons here that say some stuff in japanese i have absolutely no clue what they do again if you're japanese and you can read this uh do let us know because uh, this is pretty interesting when you just have some buttons that no clue what they do. But they're there and they look very cool. Going over to the center, it's kind of the center where the shifter is. The shifter is very nice. It is actually super nice feeling. It's pretty long. And you have, of course, the standards of safety are different between countries. This is the safety release for, it's actually an actual physical button. And then you have track off power this is very familiar if you've owned older toyotas these two control the passenger seat which is going to take us to the back seat here but uh, i'm going to move and the cameraman will move arrows wheel will move with it this actually moves the passenger seat and this is there so the driver can help the sh the boss in the back but there's something else that is pretty interesting at least to me the parking brake is here it's a lever and then there's a pull to disengage it it's kind of an interesting spot for it because uh, it's right right here i mean it is the correct spot if you kind of flip your brain upside down but it's kind of weird to see it towards the center console not towards the door but that's how it is let's talk about the back seat because this is where things get extremely interesting now the first thing you notice is this is actually not a huge space it's big but it's not huge because japanese they are not exactly large human beings for me super comfortable i feel like the boss already but uh there are a lot of little things so initially you're sitting here super nice i mean this material i can't get enough of it says sentry right here in the, on the floor mat pretty cool and then you have this little foldable thing which unfortunately is broken and it's not latching but you do have that century insignia right here again pretty cool and this opens to reveal a tv which uh i don't even know if it works there's a button right next underneath it but i guess we'll leave it at that two ac vents right here so you can not a low ac vent that blows really doesn't really do anything in most cars that have a rear seat vent these are pretty high and they're directly in your face but this is like just the first layer of things now because i am in the u.s i'm used to this is where the place to be and I actually sat here now remember i'm actually behind the driver this is not the place to be this seat is the place to be so because of that you have this which kind of the idea of this is you put it down and then you can stretch your legs through here and you can lay down and be in comfort as you are chauffeured around in your Toyota Century. Just please make sure that you have new socks and you've just taken a shower because we don't want to, you know, 
the driver. He's also a human being. Then, if you're bored of this, you have this giant armrest, which is extremely heavy, actually, to roll down. Again, that's, that beautiful material is here. And you have this handle that opens a compartment, but I just want you to hear the sound this makes when you close it. It's just a beautiful sound. You open this, and you have two cup holders, you have more radio controls, and then there's this very suspicious button that it has a volume knob to it, and it has a microphone logo next to it. I know the Japanese love karaoke and all this stuff, so I wonder if this has something to do with that. But then, if this is not enough, we have one more tier of goodies. This is the seat controls for everything. I'm gonna move this seat and just, my Camry, 2022 Camry doesn't have this much adjustment in the front seat that the 1997 Century does in the back seat. Let's watch and see. First seat moves forward and back and then the seat bottom moves up, down. And then you have lumbar support it's really hard to see on camera, but then the headrest is power operated, which is an enormous headrest because you're uh, you're supposed to uh, lay down here and be in comfort. But then we move to the next level because this is the boss's chair. You can actually move the front seat from here to just situate it however you want. This is pretty cool. Memory seats, same thing, same controls for this side. And then on the door, on the door panel right there, you have massaging rear seats, both the driver side and the passenger side. And since this is a Japanese car, we are looking at the passenger side. I suppose this just gets confusing, but yes, you do have massaging seats and heated rear seats. Pretty cool. Now there is an option that is missing on this car that has electronic curtains that roll around everywhere. They're actually made of lace. It does look kind of odd for us Americans that we're not, lace is not something luxurious. Nobody really cares about it, but it does have an option. This one doesn't have it. It has these uh, window shades, which I believe are aftermarket. I don't think these belong here, but there is the Sentry for you. And of course, there's something particularly interesting here. I mean, this is a handle, and I actually like this because when you're getting off, you can kind of hold on to it. And of course, it's made very beautiful leather. But then there's this enormous handle. <laughs> it's just huge. And then we have a coat hook, something really exhilarating. But the most important thing, here's a light. Of course, these are LED lights. Somebody changed them. That's how the car came. And the owner already told me he doesn't like them. They just don't fit the character of the car. But just in case this is too much light, you have a little dimmer for this light. So you can dim the lights and another AC vent right next to it. Of course, this is a standard of luxury cars with a flickering aftermarket LED light with the little mirror. But one more thing that is kind of a small touch, and this is the 90s for you. Over here in the headliner, you have a clock. So you can tell the time when you're a boss because your time is money if you, when you're the boss. So you have a little clock on the headliner. And there's something very unique about the back seat in this car, aside from all the unique stuff that we have. The floor is super low. I mean, this is not a very low car to the ground, but the way it's designed, the loading floor into the car is super low and it's super comfortable to get into it. I mean, usually you have to do this deal to get it in most cars, even normal cars. But in this, you just kind of sit and roll. You hardly have to lift your leg. This is super comfortable. And every time I sit in this car, me and the owner are going to end up fighting at the end of this video because uh, I'm going to want to keep this. Let's take it for a drive and you'll hear how quiet this thing is and how beautiful it is. Let's drive the Toyota Sentry. And this test drive, I'm gonna start with the car parked and off because let's listen to the sound it makes when you start it. So it's the sweet sound of a V12. Now we're driving on the wrong side of the car because this is of course a Japanese only car, but 
it just takes a little bit of adjusting to get used to it because you're sitting on the wrong side of the car and these beautiful mirrors also does take a little bit of getting used to but the main thing about the Sentry is is the way it drives I mean this is meant to be a chauffeur driving the car so I am the chauffeur and uh, Eros and the owner of the car is sitting in the back They're probably enjoying the ride more than I am but just this V12 doesn't make 700 horsepower it's not some german v12 that is meant to rip your head off it's just meant to make your head very calm and that it is incredible that a 1997 car that is this old drives like this i mean it is whisper quiet in here that's the first thing the second thing is where is the engine this almost feels like a hybrid you don't even hear the engine it is there it's moving you but you can barely hear it and uh, turns in the wrong side of the car steering wheel wise is, are interesting because all I see is the pillar so let me just make this turn here all right and uh, if you've ever been in the US at least or in a left-hand drive country driving a right-hand drive car uh, as a passenger it is very scary because you got to remember to stay on this side of the street because otherwise you're in the middle of the lane next to you and these mirrors are very interesting and this I've done this the first time I've gotten in the car the, the turn signal is on the wrong side so let's switch lanes here and let's kind of accelerate do you hear the engine I can barely hear it and we're already doing 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour nothing it's just absolute silence and the brakes very potent very capable for a car of this size is a pretty big car but I'm just loving this because this is not S class 7 series you know that class of ultra luxury cars this is not the Lexus LS this is the next level and just driving this car and the way it feels and just these mirrors and this flat dash that this is just comes from a different time era and a different design philosophy this is not meant to wow you and look at me look at me no this is actually the opposite this is meant to have the passenger in the back just sit down be chauffeured around and not be bothered by the world and this actually does that and this engine makes total sense in this car it just, just wafts you away. No fuss, no drama, no vibration, nothing. You can't feel this engine. And folks, this is not a brand new car with three miles on it. This does have 225,000 kilometers and it is very old. And it still drives like this. You can only imagine how it drove the day it was new. Probably even more than this. This is incredible. It's an absolute pleasure to drive this car. It's so bad that, uh, Eros, what do you say? Should we just hide the car behind the shed and say the owner, I don't know, somebody just came and stole it and just write him a check and call it a day? Let me think about that some more as we head back to the shop. Okay, let's move on. And of course, soft closed doors in the back. Pretty cool. Let's put this thing on the lift, let's look underneath it, because that's where there's not really almost any videos showing underneath the Sentry, so let's do that. Let's look underneath the Toyota Sentry, and it is an absolute pleasure to do so. Now, the first thing you notice is a few oil leaks. It's actually a valve cover that is leaking. We we're talking with the owner here. He wants to tackle this once he gets parts. Parts are a problem. The first thing I actually want to look at is the oil filter, which is a very hard oil filter to get for us in the U.S. I mean, this thing is a massive thing. I hope you can see it clearly in the video. It is a massive oil filter. It's unbelievable how big this thing is. But then you look past the oil filter aluminum front subframe it's pretty pretty cool to see this rack and pinion is mounted right here but before we get to that let's talk about the suspension now looking at this suspension this looks very similar 
not exactly the same, but similar to a LS400. The brakes are actually exactly the same. This contraption here with the control arms looks similar, but of course this has air suspension. Very beautiful air suspension. And then you look at the rack and pinion. It has actually, it has a solenoid on it. This is such a, this car is designed for like comfort, not really sporty handling. So this power steering actually has a super kind of sharp turn, a very cool turning radius. And the other thing is it's super light and, it, and not light at a point where it's just like, you don't feel, it has a very good feeling to it for a car like this, but it's just, it's light. It's like buttery smooth and beautiful. But then we talk about the rest of this, and this is like the testimony of high quality engineering. This thing rides so quiet, it's, un it's whisper quiet, it's unbelievable how quiet this thing is. But then you look here, there's really no covers, there's nothing, kind of like the LS400. And this is where it's all insulation on the inside, not the outside. Now we look at the exhaust, you have two catalytic converters right here. And then that leads to a resonator. And this is where the Century's party piece is. And that leads to two mufflers. But then wait, this is right now we're at the level of an LS400. Then you go more and there is two more mufflers. I mean, this thing is so quiet, you cannot hear this engine. And now we can see why. Now, something else that is similar to the LS400 is the two covers. One of them has the brake lines, one of them has the fuel lines, the EVAP lines. Same setup, they're kind of tucked away. Fortunately, this one has been scraped here, so this, this cover is a little bit hanging down, but what are you gonna do? It's a 25-year-old car. Well, equally, we have a scrape here. Perhaps we're gonna suggest to the owner, you cover this so we don't rust out, but everything else, there's actually heavy undercoating on this from the factory usually you'll see this in toyotas only on the fender like the wheel wells here you have it all over the place this is really high quality stuff then the drive shaft kind of emerges from all this it's right here it goes to the rear differential this is a very similar to the ls400 differential well, actually let's rephrase that the ls400 took the differential from the century let's keep the hierarchy correct here we look at the rear brakes, there are standard rear brakes, of course disc brake in the back, multi-link suspension, double wishbone, very cool setup here. And uh, this is of course meant for comfort and comfort. There is nothing sporty about this car and suspension. It's kind of like Rolls Royce when they don't publish their uh, horsepower figures. It's just sufficient power. Same thing with this. It's not about power. This is not a fast car and it was not intended to be. And this is not a sporty suspension. It was not intended to be. However, the uh, sway bar is actually enormous. Uh, I can imagine why for a car this heavy and this big, this is a good idea. Folks, things here is plain Toyota. There is really nothing over the moon here. But the biggest thing is this masterpiece of an engine. This engine is a masterpiece. Yes, it has oil leaks. Remember, it's a 25-year-old car. And then made it to this masterpiece of an engine is a transmission that, for lack of a better word, it doesn't shift. You don't feel the shifts. They just, just glides along. It's a four-speed automatic transmission because you don't need more than that. This is, again, not a sports car, not an exhilarating ride. This is just a car meant to really insulate you from the world and it does that so well and we can see why this is just a beautiful beautiful car things here are very similar to your lexus ls400 there is one cool thing and this this is something we've seen in other lexus models this backing plate actually curves and this is a design feature to cool the brakes instead of having a duct through the bodywork you just, the air comes in here, it actually gets channeled into the brakes, cools them down and it exits through the wheel. And uh, it's little engineering touches like this that make this car, I, I just love stuff like this. This is very functional, you already have a backing plate, might as well do it like this. What a beautiful, beautiful car. It's actually in great shape. So if you're wondering about the, them Japanese cars, some of them are rusty, but majority of them that end up coming here, 
there's zero rust anywhere here so this is pretty cool so folks this is the toyota century it is just the quintessential toyota if you are a toyota fan and you do not know about this car please after this video go and research them they are incredible the attention to detail here i mean this video does not even do justice to this car so i apologize toyota century creator people because we just we will be here for three hours talking about this car because the attention to detail and the stuff that small stuff is incredible here this is not a flashy car this is not a car that screams luxury and look at me and show off no this is a car that is very subtle very humble and that's the japanese way but when you start looking the little stuff it is mind-blowing the little attention to detail and folks this is a 1997 this is a 25 year old car that's how we are standing next to it if you're wondering how did this car come in registered in the u.s there's a law in the u.s 25 year old cars you can actually import them without having to deal with all the safety regulations so that's how this thing came up here but being a 25 year old car it is unbelievable how well it's holding up the interior the way it drives how quiet it is how smooth this engine is it is unbelievable folks i hope this video is helpful and informative i hope you enjoyed this video as much as i've had the absolute pleasure of seeing this car in person checking it out driving it and a huge shout out to the owner tim who brought us the car who gave us this opportunity to do this video so make sure you mention him in the comments thank you very much tim for bringing the car and uh sorry for the uber ride back home because i ended up buying the car from you unfortunately he did not agree so maybe we can convince him in the comments to sell me the car as well folks thank you for watching the video and until the next video may the lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day